Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So let's talk a little bit about mid-19th century firearms and how they fit into the context of the sabres and tulwars and other types of weapons that I'm usually talking about. But specifically, the contrast between revolvers and single-shot pistols. In some cases, double-shot pistols, but revolvers and old-fashioned pistols, should we say. So as many of you know, I shoot uh, black powder, um, both uh, in fact, shotguns, muskets, rifles, and revolvers. And uh, yet we can still shoot uh, handguns in the UK if they're muzzle loading, thankfully. Um, and uh, yeah, basically I was, I should, so this is a shout out thank you to the Chipping Norton Rifle and Pistol Club. I'll put a link below to their club. And uh, Milo Thurston, who I know through HEMA, he runs the Lineker School of Defense, uh, invited me over for a day of um, essentially cowboy themed shooting um, at the Chipping Norton Club and I had an absolutely great day, it was quite chilly but it was a lovely day, had great fun, I was shooting this and my lever action Winchester and um, I did much better with this relatively speaking than I did with the Winchester but the Winchester's new and I haven't quite got used to it yet but anyway um, it kind of raised some interesting points in my mind about the contrast between uh, revolvers which really came in at the end of the 1840s and um, what had gone before. So what officers generally had before they had revolvers, uh, and not just officers incidentally, but some cavalry as well, and cavalry continued using single shot pistols, were these muzzle loading single shot pistols. Sometimes they had double barreled ones, uh, sometimes, single, some, sometimes a pair of single barreled ones. It depends what they had access to and what they could afford. But uh, one of the interesting um, rounds in the competition that we did with the revolvers, uh, I should just mention I'm cleaning this, so it's quite grubby at the moment, so uh, that's why I've got it out, because I'm in the process of cleaning it. And um, black powder is very messy, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, one of the rounds was essentially we had six targets. We had six um, rounds in the chamber, and we essentially had um, six shots at different unknown ranges. Now. I could see one of the one of them was very very close. It was it probably what about uh, eight or ten feet away? I think very very close. No no maybe a bit further than that. Maybe yeah maybe about fifteen feet away. And then they varied all the way out to I believe it was thirty yards, um, which is roughly thirty meters. Um, and they were dotted around at different parts in the in the course on the shooting range at unknown essentially ranges. And they were fairly small targets. I mean they were they were sort of central body mass size with a uh, with a small black um, central target in them. Now what was interesting is lots of people shoot pistols by using the sights, okay? On a Colt that means uh, your rear sight is actually a notch in the hammer and the foresight is what you can see sticking up on the barrel there. With other types of revolver for example, um, the, well for example the Adams revolver, the Beaumont Adams, uh, that's actually got a rear sight on it, but with a Colt revolver, because you don't have a top strap here, it's not a fully enclosed frame, there's nowhere to stick the, uh, the rear sight. Although, some people do have rear sights fitted up here on them. But anyway, that's, I digress. Um, so you can either obviously use the sights to aim, or you can just point and shoot. Now, in a kind of self-defense situation, or kind of 19th century battlefield situation, often all your, sorry, I just release the spring there, all you're gonna do is uh, sh a, you know, point the thing at something and pull the trigger very often. You're not gonna line up the rear sight with the front sight because you don't have time to. And uh, one of the reasons I use the Colt 1851 Navy, incidentally, is because I'm interested in the weapons of um, the British Army in the 19th century, and these were used in the British Army uh, by primarily by officers, but also by cavalry in some cases, uh, and also by Navy um, sailors and officers. Um, so uh, this is this model of Colt, unlike later models of Colt, was used in, in Europe quite a lot. And in fact, even in America, this remained, even after later models came out, the Colt Navy, the 1851, was very, very popular. And there are even cartridge conversions of it. Um, so uh, yeah, one of, one of the things that um, I found is when you've got to shoot six shots quickly at unknown ranges, I found it easier to just point and shoot. Um, and luckily I got most of my bullets onto, onto the target in that round. Um, and no great credit to me, I'm not a great shot or anything like that, but, um, but for that round I found that just pointing and shooting was the thing to do. Now, what's interesting is 
That's imagining six different opponents. Imagine, for a second, if you've got one of these and there are six different opponents. Well, that's where swords and bayonets come into it, isn't it, kids? And basically, if you've only got a single shot pistol or maybe a pair of pistols, then at most you can only engage two of those targets and then you better hope you've got some friends on standby. There is a famous account from the Crimean War, which I often refer to, where an officer with an Adams revolver shot five Russians um, with five shots. The Adams has five rather than the six of the Colt. And, um, you know, he says, I wouldn't have been able to do that um, if I hadn't had a revolver, if I hadn't had one of uh, Adams's revolvers. But equally, he says, he thinks he couldn't have done that with a Colt uh, because the Colt is single action and needs to be cocked before each shot. The Adams, you can just squeeze the trigger. I talked about that in other videos. Have a look. If you have a search for Colt revolver in my videos, you'll find those. But the thing which really struck me was in, let's say, the Crimean War in 1854, and this would go for any of the conflicts in the 1850s, so the Indian Mutiny as well, for example, or even into some of the 1860s conflicts, um, many officers didn't have a revolver, they had one of these. And it struck me that you would use them differently because I was shooting at six targets at different ranges. First of all, because I had a revolver, I could engage six targets, and if I hit one, then I could literally move on to the target. So, so you could shoot at six opponents because you've got six shots, okay? Um, if you've only got one shot, you can only shoot at one opponent. And, but equally, if, say, it was just one opponent and you kept missing or you weren't putting them down, you've got six goes at it with this. And there is, yet again, I've referred to this before, but there's one famous account from the, uh, from the mutiny of, uh, of an officer shooting at a charging uh, opponent and shooting them six times with his Colt revolver 36. It was probably exactly like this. It's probably a Colt Navy 1851. And he shot them six times through the body and they, uh, they died. They did die, but they got to them. They got to point blank range, you know, the 21 foot rule. They got to point blank range and chopped the person down with their sword and then died. So they were both dead. So you could say, ah, the revolver did its job. It killed the person, yeah, but it didn't defend that person. And I've spoken in the past about the fact that pistols are good at shooting, but you can't manually, physically defend with them. So if someone's very close, apart from just shooting them more and hoping that the bullets stop them, you can't actually sort of parry with the thing. Not really, anyway, not effectively. Possibly you could. Uh, but, um, but anyway, if you've got a single shot pistol, now imagine you've got an opponent charging you down. Well, with this, with the revolver, you know in your brain that you've got either five or six shots, depending on the type of revolver. So you can afford to keep cocking the, as soon as you see them charging at you, or starting shooting at you, you can, you can actually expend some shots at further range as they close in or as you close in or whatever, because you know you've got some leeway for missing there. With a single shot pistol, it's entirely different. With the single shot pistol, you don't, you simply don't have that liberty. You know you're not going to have time to reload. You've got one shot. Now I should mention also that the one shot from this, at least from this pistol and from many what, single shot pistols, if you look at the uh, muzzle size of those two guns, you can see that the, uh, well, it's about three times the volume, okay? I don't even know what caliber this is. I think it's about 0.65 or uh, 6.8, something like that. It's massive, okay? I can literally fit the end of my index finger <laughs> into this pistol. It's like a musket caliber. In fact, it's a large musket caliber. It's bigger than my, uh, it's bigger than rifles. It's certainly bigger than 45. I mean, it's way bigger. It's, yeah, it's 0.65, something like that. And uh, this is a 36 caliber. So. Not only is that a bigger ball, but it's gonna have a whopping great charge of powder behind it as well. So this actually is uh, you know, gonna have a lot of stopping power, but you've only got one shot, haven't you? Um, it's very reliable, there's nothing that can go wrong. Unlike the jams that you can get with revolvers, where the percussion caps can fall off and fall underneath the revolving um, cylinder, or they can uh, fall down the back of the hammer and jam up the whole action, uh, you don't have that issue with this. There is nothing to jam up with these. Assuming your mainspring works and assuming your, there's nothing wrong with your nipple and it's got a hole going through to the, to the uh, breech, then you've just got no issues. Okay, this has got a little nipple protector on it. Um, so it's a very simple thing. It's unlikely to misfire, assuming your percussion caps are okay um, and assuming your powder's dry. 
uh, it's, it's much more reliable than a revolver, but you only have one shot, but it's one effective shot. So something I noticed when I was shooting with the uh, revolver at Chipping Norton was that by point and shoot, that is without even aiming, um, it was extremely easy to be extremely accurate at close range. And I'd never shot at that close range before. I'd only ever shot this, I think, at 30 yards. I don't think I've ever shot closer than 30 yards with this. And it, so it was very interesting to me shoot, to shoot at a target that was, you know, maybe 12, 15 feet away, very, very close. And it just drilled straight through the centre of the, of the target with no problem, without aiming, without, you know, without using the, the sights anyway, the rear and the foresight, just point and pull the trigger. Um, and that made me think, if I only had a single shot pistol, okay, if I was in the Crimea or Mutiny or wherever with one of these, would I even shoot at anybody who was further away than, than maybe 10 metres? Probably not, actually. And I think when we talk about hand weapons, be it bayonets or, or, um, or swords or cutlasses or whatever, knives, you've got to bear that in mind that with a sing if a person really in close combat has no realistic options of reloading, they're not going to, I mean, they might be able to quickly pull out a paper cartridge, bite the end off, put the powder down, jam the ball in, quickly uh, get the ramrod out and jam, uh, jam the thing down. Um, put the put the thing on either full or half cock. Jam a percussion cap on the back. Oh, don't worry about putting the. Uh, finally, I'm ready to shoot again. No, okay. In in the in the swirl of of melee and close combat, you're realistically not going to have time to do that unless you've got some uh, compatriots who are fighting while you're standing behind them, quickly reloading, which might work in some scenarios. But generally speaking, boom, one shot maybe two if you've got a double barrel, um, and you're done, okay? So, um, it was very, very enlightening for me because I've never shot at multiple ranges before. That was very interesting. I couldn't guess the range. I, I didn't really know where my aiming point would be. I have some issues with the aiming point in this Colt Navy anyway because it tends to shoot quite high, so I tend to have to shoot at groin height if I want to hit chest height. Um, so I just pointed with my hand and pulled the trigger and it kind of worked okay, certainly worked very well at close range, not so much at further range. So to conclude, I think that whether you're talking about the Napoleonic era or in fact even if you're talking about the English Civil War, you know, kind of 17th century, 30 years war, whatever, with wheel locks or early flint locks and dog locks and things like this, if you're talking with single shot firearms, I think very often if, if the opponent is within a distance whereby you know you couldn't safely reload, you don't have that problem with a revolver, and that's why revolvers changed a lot. If you know that you can't safely reload, then you will probably, a lot of the time, wait until you were close enough to the opponent that you were pretty damn sure that you could hit them with that one shot. Because if it's you versus just one other person, if they have a pistol as well and they take a shot at you from 30 yards away and miss, they're now completely at your mercy. But equally, it would go the other way around if you shot too early. So, really just to say that, single shot pistols, despite the fact they were around at the same time as revolvers, really, really, you have to play a very, very different game with a single or double shot um, pistol compared to a revolver where you have multiple shots. You cannot afford to waste shots with this type of um, single shot gun. And probably, I suspect, and there is written evidence to back up some of this, um, a lot of shots that would have been done with these type of firearms would have been done at really quite close range. The range whereby you'd have one go, one chance, and then it would be down to hand weapons or wrestling if you didn't have any hand weapons. Anyway, I hope that's been somewhat interesting. Thanks for watching and I will see you for the next video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.